Alright guys, I am back with my next video I've been super excited about um, checking out these DJI goggles. The thing I've been promising for quite a while now is that I was going to figure out a way to get an external video source into these goggles. As you can see, I've kind of remodeled the top of these goggles. I'll get to that in a bit. Let me kind of run down what I ended up doing here. Right here, I've got a TBS Unify Pro Race, and I've got it locked into pit mode, and I've got it outputting on pit mode to 5800 right there in the center of 5.8. I ended up bugging Joshua Bardwell and I'd be crazy quite a bit about this, just trying to learn about how this stuff works. I was curious if it would even work and uh, they were super helpful, super nice. This is not endorsed by them. I'd be crazy literally responded back once and said that's a terrible idea. So keep that in mind. The stuff that I learned, I learned from them and even the folks from True D helped me out quite a bit in understanding a certain aspect of it. So what I found out is that receivers, receivers like inside of these goggles are rated in what's called DBM and this was all part of the learning process but uh, Wikipedia says that DBM is an abbreviation for the power ratio in decibels of the measured power reference to one milliwatt so it's the power ratio that these things put out and that uh, these goggles receive from a little bit of research it was easy to find out that uh, the receiver module in a goggle is rated down to like negative 95 DBM but I couldn't find anywhere public published where it said what the maximum DBM was. If I was gonna be plugging you know, a direct power source straight into it, I didn't want to burn anything out. So the guys from True D ended up letting me know that their receivers, mind you, this is not a True D receiver, but a True D receiver is rated at five dBm is what they can handle. A few different resources online, Immersion RC had a calculator that would allow you to calculate your dBm based on how far away the antenna was on the receiver from the antenna on the transmitter. What I found out is that it was like three feet or one meter equaled about 27 dBm. So if you had a VTX outputting 200 milliwatts and it was one meter away or three feet away from your receiver, that signal would be at like negative two dBm. I wanted to make sure that it was gonna be safe. So after a bunch of digging and stuff, I decided that I wanted to be somewhere around negative 30 to negative 40 dBm. So what I did, I've got my TBS Unify Pro in pit mode, outputting at 0.1 milliwatt, which ends up being negative 10 dBm, and I added a 30 dB attenuator to it, so that puts me at negative 40 dBm. So that's what I did to make sure I didn't burn out this receiver. Now, 0.1 milliwatts, assuming that this is actually putting out what it's supposed to, should be negative 10. In case it was one milliwatt instead of 0.1 milliwatts, I would still be in kind of an acceptable range. Technically, negative 10, I should be able to just plug this straight into the receiver, but I, I don't wanna burn this up. These goggles are expensive. Both Joshua Bardwell and Ivy Crazy said, hey, if you're gonna do this, it's a terrible idea, but use a 30 dB attenuator, you'll be fine. That's what I did. I appreciate their input, but I wanted to find out why just do some learning for my own sake. So that's what's going on here. TBS Unify Pro in race mode, in pit mode, 30 dB attenuator, just a bunch of adapters and stuff, get this to plug into the goggles. So, so give me just a second here. I'm gonna get all this kind of mounted on and we'll see how and if it works. <music> So I got this sucker put on there. I got the goggles DVRing. Obviously, I cannot see what the goggles see, but I do have the goggles tuned in to 5800 or F4. What I did here on the Unify Pro, on one side of the harness, I put just an RCA plug. That was gonna work the best for me. I just made one of these deals, an XT60 to one of these JST connectors. Yes, before you say it, I know the JST connector can't handle as many amps as the XT60, blah, 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 I get it. I have no intention of doing that. It's just, it made more sense to do it this way and I could use any battery I want. And that's what's going on there. I actually made a cable for this. I'm not sure yet whether or not I'm gonna buy a clear view to use this with. If I plan on using these for my every race goggle, I will end up buying a clear view ground station to use these. I'm not sure if I will or not. Nonetheless, I went ahead and made a cable that should go from a clear view to an RCA cable. In the future, I'm ready for that. But for now, I'm not gonna mess with a ground station. I'm essentially just gonna use an FPV camera plugged into its harness. I'm coming out of the RCA connection and I'm gonna plug it into my video input 
on the Unify Pro, and then I'm gonna give the Unify Pro some power, and I'm pretty sure you guys can see video now. So once the Unify Pro goes through its blinks, it's just lit up orange, which means it's in pit mode. I'll flip these around and just look to see what they see. And there we go, guys. Where's that? There it is. Uh, we got the camera. It's nice and crystal clear. Looks good. So that's essentially the first step of this whole thing is getting the feed into the goggles. Now, there is a very serious elephant in the room here that I need to address, and that is the fact that I am now broadcasting, even though it's just 0.1 milliwatts, I am in fact broadcasting video signal at the flight line that may or may not be my own. That could be a real issue. Moreover, it could be a situation where someone else around me is trying to broadcast on this channel and they caused me some interference. So I felt like one of those conspiracy theory nuts is making a uh, tinfoil hat tonight. You guys that know me personally know that I'm obsessed with Faraday cages. My plan is a 3D print, like a little frame that I can snap on here, put on here, and cover in tinfoil conductive tape to make myself a bit of a Faraday cage. For now, I'm just going to use this that I made. <laughs> So I'm gonna tape this on here, make sure it's sealed. Being in pit mode, I don't think this, you know, heat will be an issue for the Unify. But nonetheless, I wanna get this hooked up and do some testing to see how it does with other sets of goggles around and that kind of thing. So let me get this connected real quick. <music> Yeah, that's not unsightly, is it? <laughs> All right, so now that that's sealed up, I'm gonna grab my fat shark. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do some testing with what happens when I start broadcasting on F4 or 5800. All right, so I have the fat shark goggles here. Um, obviously, I'm recording in the DJI goggles. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the DJI goggles here and I'm gonna simulate a flight line and then plug in the Baby Hawk on the other side of my house at 25 milliwatts and see what kind of interference I get. Let's give that a shot and uh, go from there. All right, so here's the Baby Hawk. I have the, go the Fat Shark goggles on my head. The Baby Hawk is transmitting at 25 milliwatts and obviously being this close to my goggles, I'm obviously getting the zero interference. So that's going on there. I'm gonna kind of peek inside of the DJI goggles and see if they're getting interference from the Baby Hawk. And they are absolutely getting a ton of interference. Actually, I wouldn't even say that's interference. I would say that overrun by the Baby Hawk right now. But I'm gonna test this out by moving the Baby Hawk away from this room. I also have this antenna on the Baby Hawk because uh, my dipole came disconnected. And I decided it'd be easier. All right, let's go stick this Baby Hawk around and see what it does. All right, so I got the Baby Hawk sat down um, just across the room. In the Fat Shark goggles, it's crystal clear. In the DJI goggles, what do we see? In the DJI goggles, we're seeing a ton of interference between the Baby Hawk TBS Unify half plugged in. So now I'm gonna try to move the Baby Hawk in the other room and see what it does in comparison. All right, so the Baby Hawk is in the hallway now. So there's a little bit of distance between it and myself. Even with the Fat Sharks right up against the DJI goggles, I'm not getting interference, so that's cool. Big thing to know, interference between this TBS Unify and other pilots on the flight line is gonna be nil, next to none. So uh, that's pretty cool. Now, the interference, whoop. What is going on? DJI, one thing in regard to these goggles, if you could just like give us buttons instead of making the whole freaking thing a button, that'd be awesome. Because every time I grab it, touch it, like I'm doing stuff and that sucks. <laughs> All right. It is quite disappointing that I'm still getting a lot of interference from the Baby Hawk to the receiver in these goggles. So I'm gonna move the Baby Hawk even further away and see what happens with the Fat Shark goggle feed, see if these clear up. Yeah, let's do that. In regard to interference on the Fat Sharks and in regard to uh, interference on the DJI goggles, so. All 
right, so the baby hawk is currently in my kitchen, which is something like 40 feet away from where I'm sitting right now. One thing to keep in mind though is it's through like one, two, three different walls that are insulated and, and the whole nine. So still, my FPV feed on my goggles is crystal clear, getting tiny little flashes of flickers, but nothing too serious at all. So um, that's interesting. Let's check in on the DJI goggles. They're officially free of any kind of interference, so that's pretty cool. It's cold outside, guys. It's literally like 11 degrees outside, but I wanna see kind of an open air what this does. So I'm gonna take this whole rig outside. I'm gonna stop filming with this camera so there won't be any talking. I'll have some clips and I'll explain with text over it and what's going on. But yeah, so let's do that and uh, I'll be back in a second. See how it goes. <music> nice and warm it's actually been like two or three hours really I've been working on editing this video reviewing all the footage and that kind of thing something kind of jumps out at me so I'm hoping maybe Josh or Alex you guys can see this video and help me out a little bit it doesn't seem like interference from my pit mode setup to the other quads and the other goggles on the flight line is gonna be an issue when I sat on the porch I had like zero interference from this get up but there is a pretty serious interference issue with you know someone else's quad flying around this goggle setup. So Alex and Josh, if you can kind of pipe up here, I need a little bit of guidance. I know both of you said you absolutely must put a 30 dB attenuator between the VTX and the goggle receiver, but I wanna push back a little bit. Um, maybe you didn't understand the question. Maybe you thought I was gonna be at 25 milliwatts or 200 milliwatts instead of 0.1 milliwatts in pit mode. When I do the math, if a true D receiver module like the one I have in here if it's rated up to if it's rated up to 5 dBm before any damage then why do I need to attenuate all the way down to negative 40 dBm let alone any attenuation that comes naturally through the wire and through the adapters and that kind of thing if the receiver module can handle positive 5 dBm is there anything wrong with me plugging the VTX straight into the goggles in pit mode at negative 10 dBm DBM, I think that would solve all of my interference issues and I don't think the absence of that attenuator is going to make any difference on interference outside of the goggles. The attenuator doesn't have anything to do with how much power is radiating out. Also both of you guys I'm quite embarrassed with my uh, and also guys just keep in mind I am quite embarrassed with the rickety rackety situation I got going on calling it a Faraday cage. I know this is not a Faraday cage. There will be some more engineering happening before you see that again. So, so let me know what you think. If you know anything about this stuff and you think I could in fact plug the VTX directly into the goggles in pit mode at 0.1 milliwatts which equals negative 10 dBm or maybe I should try a 10 decibel attenuator instead of a 30 decibel attenuator. I'm open to ideas guys but nonetheless I do think this will work especially for flying by yourself. There's no issues there but I do think this is a viable race setup if the goggles didn't have that stupid freaking extra 20 milliseconds of latency. So hope this helped you out. I'm definitely not done messing with these goggles so you'll hear from me again but until then thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you next time on Heart of America FPV. Later. <laughs>